Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel, Dr. Ross Explains. Today's topic is chapter 20, Ecology and Biosphere. So this is from our orange book, Concepts of Biology, chapter 20. So let's get started. Okay, so what is ecology and biosphere? So this is a combination of next uh, two chapters, actually, uh, this chapter 20 and chapter 19. They are both about ecology. So we have um, student learning outcomes is listed here um, in your PowerPoints. So biodiversity is one of those. Students will recognize significant biodiversity in maintaining ecosystem health and functionality. And also we'll look at ecological interactions, but also we will look at basic ecology uh, definitions and vocabulary. So um, here is a... There is a hierarchical order starting with organism, which is the species at the very bottom, and then population, which is group of same organisms, then community, which is basically a group of populations, but different species. This is also first one, two, and three. They are all biotic. And then number four is ecosystem, which actually include living and non-living. Um, and so many habitats are in this group, which is ecosystems. Ecosystems has both biotic and abiotic. What is abiotic? Abiotic can be air, soil, water, temperature, light, um, anything non-living, wind, rocks, fire. All these, uh, they are considered abiotic factors. Uh, that's number four. So number five is biome, which is, um, so which are several, which is made of, several ecosystems, uh, which is also a biogeographical unit. We know from the earlier chapters, so biome, several habitats made biomes. One habitat is basically a natural home of a, an organism. A biome is several habitats. Okay, so life zones. What majors and neighborhoods are in this group? Um, and the next is biosphere, which is in the earth, this is the biggest, biggest uh, unit, which is global ecosystem, right? So part of the earth that all living things exist. Um, so it's like there is 20 kilometer biosphere, of, like there is this atmosphere, which is air, hydrosphere, which is water, and lithosphere, which is land. And it goes from there, earth, solar system, galaxies, and universe. So... Let's take a look at some other uh, features of ecology. First, what is ecology? Ecology is a study of organisms and their interaction. So studying the organism and their interaction with environment. So, um, so we didn't see environment too much in earlier chapters. So ecology is a very large scale, uh, actually area in biology, really cool area. So all these uh, hierarchy of one to six are also here. You can see organism to the biosphere. Biotic factors are the ones that they are like all the living things. And abiotic is all non-living things. Habitat is the specific um, natural home of an organism. So uh, there are many sub uh, sections of ecology. There is organismal. So population ecology, community ecology, and ecosystem ecology. So we are going to focus on just the uh, um, organismal population level, a little bit maybe community. Okay, so what are the major themes in ecology? So um, but the major themes in biology overall that we learn in chapter one like relationship of structure to function, like how structure determines function, information flow, we still learn, pathways of transforming energy and matter, we learn an interaction within biological systems, and then we learn about evolution. So, um, and they all apply here, actually, to this chapter, chapter 20, ecology and biosphere. Okay, so just remember that. So, um, of course, the energy part is, so ecology also includes energy and the cycles, all the nutrient cycles, 
water cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, all of those actually also part of ecology. Okay, so temperature becomes a very, very important uh, in ecology. So it's an abiotic factor. And um, so living organisms usually live in zero to 45 degrees Celsius uh, temperature range. Okay, so this is also the same as 32 Fahrenheit to 113 Fahrenheit. Um, water is very, very big, obviously, we know we had a specific chapter on water. So water, as we know, is essential to the life. So um, if, if when, when, the, when the scientists are searching for life in other planets, first thing they're searching is water. So that can tell us how important water is. So, and also there are a lot of aquatic organisms, they live in water and terrestrial organisms, they also, they dry out if the water is not available to them. So very important. And the next thing is inorganic nutrients. We know from the periodic table, so most, most nutrients are inorganic and they have to be taken from outside. That's important for like from the soil, pH, nutrient content, like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, right? With nitrogen and phosphorus, two big major ones that they are actually uh, they are um they are in this group. Okay, so um so we are gonna also look at um some uh, so you can also remember what we covered in last chapter, which is evolutionary. Evolutionary, um, evolutionary relationships. So we are not going to cover them this chapter, but don't forget what you learned in last chapter. Um, so what are the, some physiological responses? So we know that temperature, water, they, they can be a limiting factors, but acclimation is something that um, gradual, reversible, physiological adjustment that occurs in response to this environmental change. Okay, so... Um, um, you can see here in this map the lizard species in different regions of the United States. You can see how actually their number is changing and according to the different temperatures as well. Okay, so um, the next thing is anatomical um, responses. So some uh, organisms actually respond to the, um, these uh, different, different environmental, environmental conditions by actually anatomical responses. So um, maybe they might actually, you can see here an Arctic fox in winter, like with the white coat and a summer in a non-white coat, just one example. And this tree, you can see their, um, their, um, um, their um, uh, branches and leaves actually specific, specifically is on the one side because of the wind actually direction. Um, so in this picture, you can see here the, all the biomes. Biome is our number five. Uh, biome is our number five item that we actually uh, uh, we seen in this hierarchical uh, levels. So biome is by a geographical unit and there are several ecosystems you can see in this picture. Um, some of them are wet, some of them are dry. So there are terrestrial biomes, there are aquatic biomes, and there is this whole list of them. So make sure you check each of these biomes. Um, there is freshwater biomes, that's less than 1% of the earth. There are lakes and ponds, and um, and then they have also different regions. Um, so rivers, streams, um, wetlands, right? So these are all different biomes, marine biomes like um, zooplankton. You can see in this picture, which um, which is zoo means animal. So anything with all these um, marine animals, actually, you can see live in that biome. And marine biomes actually very rich. Coral reefs are also part of these, um, these uh, marine biomes that warm part of the tropical waters, especially. Um, and um, there are the estuaries, which is basically a transition area between river and ocean. There are some organisms that live there and nesting and feeding areas for, for them. So how climate affects terrestrial biome distribution? Well, climate obviously, Terrestrial biomes determined by climate, which is temperature and rainfall. So earth climate patterns definitely impact these uh, uh, for sure. Um, so how else? Please um, read through this chapter 20 and look at each of these biomes. 
look at the terrestrial biomes and specifically what's their name and what's their major function. So I go over that like tropical forest, forest, very big one. And they basically where temperature is warm year around and type of vegetation. And that is um, determined by rainfall. Savannas are opposite, which is dominated by grasses and and warm year around, but uh, there is a 30 to 50 centimeter drum, um, rainfall. Um, deserts are like Sonoran Desert, uh, for example. They are biomes that they have uh, very little water, but very dry and very hot te temperatures. Coniferous forests are very unique also um, biomes and dominated by cone-bearing uh, uh, gymnosperm trees. Tundras are the uh, areas that we see in the Arctic between taiga and polar ice and much colder uh, biomes. And polar ice, which, which, which is very tough and cold, we also see in the next chapter. Um, so the cover with the latitudes north of Arctic tundra, and then they are actually also in both northern and southern hemisphere. And water cycles and also other uh, cycles are also part of the ecology. Uh, so five major factors that climate change we learned in previous chapters also apply here. Global warming uh, is number one, obviously, and some volcanic eruptions and other, other areas. So, and human impacts on the biomes. We know human impacts in the forest and deforestation and a lot of other areas that affects the biomes. And the greenhouse effects of the uh, um, global warming, which basically can actually increase the temperatures, which is also something directly linked to increasing CO2 levels. Okay. Um, so I keep reading the chapter 20 and um and look at the, uh, basically how human impact actually the footprints on ecology and study that. And then um I will see you in um in the next chapter, this is there is a uh, there is a actually a college and bias or chapter twenty, also somewhere here and also in your uh, PowerPoint. So to just to recap, ecology and bias well is just introduction to ecology and bias well, which is chapter twenty, which includes organism, population, community, ecosystem, biome, and biosphere levels. So thank you for watching and see you in next video.